There is a mountain of speculation and absolute garbage that's been printed about the Tesla Model 2, the Model A, the $25,000 electric vehicle. There are so many articles, videos, and frankly, not a single one of them actually accurately describes what this vehicle will be. Gives an idea on the battery, the actual production timeline, and whether or not it's going to have a steering wheel. Electric, yeah, you're wrong on that one. So here's the video. I've done all the research and I believe I have a pretty good idea when this car is coming, what batteries it'll have and what it's going to cost. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. And this video is largely speculation. That's the truth. But I would say it's educated speculation. I've read every single article that I can find. I've actually read the comments that the company has made on this car, the most recent comments. And I've read some comments from Chinese media plus Chinese insiders who appear to know about some dealings and contracts that Tesla has made. In fact, that Tesla made a long time ago with suppliers. So we have a pretty good idea, or at least I believe after doing that research, I have a pretty good idea of what this car will be. And I have a pretty good idea of how Tesla will be able to make what I believe will be the most efficient, affordable, and profitable budget-priced electric car in the history of mankind. Yes, I know that's saying a lot, but we've come a long way with manufacturing. Tesla's gonna to put two and two together. They have some manufacturing techniques that they are using that are clearly enabling them to have an enormous advantage in production cost versus everyone else. Now, CATL have some big advantages that frankly Tesla don't really have. Tesla are gonna put those two together. That's what's gonna enable this vehicle. Here's what I believe Tesla's priorities are in 2023, even today. Number one, the Cybertruck. They already have one and a half million pre-orders. That is a very big priority for them. Number two, the Model 2, the Model A. Let's just stick, let's just stick with it. Let's call it the Model 2. Doesn't matter what the name is. That's what we'll go with. And number three, the Semi. I don't believe the Roadster is really that relevant. So we know from Ray for Tesla that suppliers were negotiated in 2021. Yeah, 2021, more than a year ago. And that at that time, Chinese media and insiders predicted the car would be in production by 2022. Now, obviously that didn't happen. I believe the reason for that is not what everyone thinks it is. I believe the reason for that was because Tesla have been waiting for CATL to actually complete production of their new factory in Shanghai and to actually roll out the new battery technology, which will enable this car to be the price that Tesla is going for. You can't actually provide a product, right? At a price that uh, you want to hit unless you have the technology to do that. And Tesla's been waiting for that technology to be launched. Now, the CATL would have told Tesla they had this technology coming. I'm talking about the M3P battery, the M3P CTP battery, two different terms there. Well, M3P is a reference to the battery tech. The CTP is a reference to the fact that it's a structural battery. So Tesla needed that battery pack to make this vehicle possible. Obviously, this vehicle will not come with 4680 battery cells. Tesla have already revealed that. They've said 4680s will be in Tesla's higher priced cars. Tesla's cheaper cars will only have lithium ion phosphate battery cells. Now, Elon Musk actually told Tesla employees this year that they want to release and begin producing the car in 2023. And I believe due to recent events in China, such as Tesla needing to discount its cars to actually sell them, which to be honest is not a problem. Tesla have enormous margins. Their competitors do not. So that's a huge advantage for them to be able to pull that demand lever, but they had to do that. So I think Tesla knows that the 23 million car Chinese car market is incredibly important to their future success. The Tesla can't possibly sell 20 million EVs a year, right? Which is, a, which is more than... That's more than a quarter of the entire global car market. They can't possibly do that unless they own the Chinese car market. When I say own, I mean, they need at least 20% of the Chinese car market to do that. Now, I don't think they're going to hit 20 million. I think 10 million, but they still need China. And the Chinese want affordable, smaller EVs. Therefore, Tesla have sped up 
their production goals for this vehicle. And the truth is they've been working on this car since 2020. So they've had more than enough time to work this out. I'm confident Tesla will start production of this vehicle in 2023, but I'm thinking it'll be more like the fourth quarter of 2023. So around one year from today. In fact, I'm so confident that I believe trial production of this vehicle has already begun. Obviously, ramping up is a whole different story. Trial production and actually producing this car on mass, very, very different. But of course, Tesla are in a very different position to what they're in in 2017. They can do it, they can do it quickly. We know the, the cost of this vehicle. Well, we know the cost for Tesla. Tesla is saying the cost for the base, as in the cost for the skateboard of the car, the platform that includes the structural battery pack, the motors, the chassis, etc., will cost 50% less than their current base. Now, how are they going to do that? Well, one way is by reducing the amount of batteries, reducing the overall vehicle weight using M3P batteries. So using the cell to pack technology, so using the structural battery pack and using the new M3P batteries, Tesla will be able to put a lot less batteries in the vehicle. That will significantly reduce the weight. Obviously, using things like structural gigacastings will do that too. And this is the only possible way Tesla can actually hit their goals. They need 30% profit margins. That's what Tesla are aiming for now. That's kind of what they're looking at. 30% margins. That means that they can change the price as they see fit, but it also gives them the current industry leading margins, which is what they have. Why not continue down that route if you can? So for Tesla to produce this car and sell the base model variant for 25,000 US dollars in China, that won't be the price in the US, my friends. I'll tell you what I think the price will be in just a second though. Then they need to reduce the manufacturing costs for the entire vehicle to no more than 18,000 US dollars for the base model variant. Therefore, that base model variant will have a much smaller battery pack, therefore a smaller range. But it will also have industry leading efficiency, which will give it a reasonable range. Now to cut production costs enough, they can't just change the batteries. They need to do more than that. Tesla will achieve significant cost savings by using a new large scale casting process for the underlying vehicle frame. Plus using a structural battery pack as well will help to reduce weight and cost and improve efficiency. Now this approach will eliminate scores of individual stampings, welding, riveting, etc., and many, many parts, and will slash the number of man hours needed on the assembly line. Now, in addition to that, Tesla's gonna go further than this. They're gonna use more robots to build this vehicle. Of course, they own Groman Engineering, right? A robotics firm. And Tesla will use as few people as possible in the production process. But more than anything else, it's the battery that will save Tesla the most money. They'll be able to make these battery packs much smaller, but still provide a long range. How will they do that? The M3P battery. If you haven't heard of the M3P battery or you've forgotten what it's about, CATL recently announced their new battery, which they say they'll be mass producing by the end of this year. More than likely in the factory they have just down the road from Tesla's facility in Shanghai. That will be the world's biggest battery factory when it goes online within the next few weeks. Here at this factory, they'll be building the LMFP battery pack. LMFP stands for lithium manganese ferrophosphate. It's very similar to an LFP chemistry, only that the manganese allows for the voltage to rise from 3.2 to around 4.1 volts. And this means there is a higher energy density inside the same form factor. CATL doesn't need to change this battery pack. It's already ready for mass production. Now here's why voltage matters. The lower the nominal and fully charged voltage, the longer the lifespan of a battery. If you look at LTO, lithium titanium oxide, AKA LITTIO3, the nominal voltage lies at 2.3 volts and the lifespan can reach around 2000 cycles with a fully charged voltage at 2.8 volts. If we look at lithium ternary cells, which are produced for vehicles such as Volkswagen EVs, Renault EVs, I mean, most electric cars, General Motors uses lithium ternary batteries. They're the most common type of battery on the market now, but they are more expensive than LFP, lithium ion phosphate batteries. Some of the kinds of batteries we see in a lithium ternary battery are NMC chemistry, which is lithium nickel manganese cobalt oxide, and NCA batteries, which use a nickel lithium 
cobalt and aluminum oxide chemistry. And these are what are currently used for most Teslas, while all Teslas that don't use lithium ion phosphate cells. So it's believed that with the new M3P battery being manufactured by CATL, what CATL have managed to do is give a lifespan similar to lithium ion phosphate batteries with a higher operating voltage. Now, M3P batteries use the same olivine structure as an LFP battery. However, they replace iron with magnesium, zinc, and aluminium. There is speculation as to whether or not that magnesium is actually manganese. It's more than likely it actually is. Official data shows the energy density of CATL batteries is 15 to 20% higher than that of LFP batteries, which hovers at around 210 watts per kilo. This is a massive increase, but CATL say the batteries are exactly the same cost for Tesla as the existing LFP batteries. That means the batteries are not only much more energy dense, they're actually also lighter because the company builds them in a structural battery pack. Tesla will use that structural battery pack. This will increase the range of the cars, lowering the weight at the same time. There's one added benefit. These batteries actually have a much higher volumetric ratio. What does that mean? It means the battery pack size is smaller with the same amount of batteries. The smaller the pack size, the lower the weight. One of the other key reasons that Tesla will be able to reduce the price enormously is something that no one really talks about. That is, that Tesla's say they've achieved 100% localization and this will massively reduce costs. What does that mean? Well, most of the suppliers now that supply Tesla's factory in Shanghai are located within about a 20 kilometer radius of the factory. Plus, there's one other thing that we need to talk about, production. If Tesla is really aiming to produce as many of these as they say, that in and of itself will massively reduce the cost of each individual unit. Tesla says it will produce more of these than every other model it sells put together. So put together the Model Y, the Model 3, Model S, Model X, and Cybertruck. Put all those sales together and they say they'll produce as many of these, if not more. That would be millions. And I'll give you my prediction for how many millions in just a second. Production, where will it be produced? Well, for the first year, it will be produced at Shanghai only. After that, Tesla will actually begin producing it in Texas. It's not really feasible for Tesla to build these in Shanghai and ship them to the United States. They definitely will have to produce them in the US as well. Of course, it's cheaper for Tesla to build the cars in China, but obviously shipping them to the US and not getting the incentives right? That will make them economically unfeasible. Tesla does need to manufacture them in the US and it will almost certainly produce them at the factory in Texas. The key reason that factory has, well, it's enormous. It's basically twice the size of Tesla's factory in Fremont. So even with production of the Cybertruck and the Model Y at that factory, I believe Tesla still has planned to have the space to build enough of these for the North American market from that factory. So will it have a steering wheel? Well, electric claims it's not gonna have a steering wheel, it's not even gonna have pedals or brakes. That, my friends, is ridiculous clickbait. They know it, everyone, to be honest, this is the kind of thing that makes me kind of get a bit frustrated, people being misled by these kind of clickbait nonsense, right? The purpose of this video here is to give you the most accurate information possible. It will most certainly have a steering wheel, it will have an accelerator, it'll have a brake pedal, it'll be just like every other electric car. So don't listen to that nonsense. What about models? There'll be two different models. There'll be a hatchback version and like an SUV version. Basically, you're gonna have a Model 3 and a Model Y version. So in the same way that those two cars have share most of their parts, they share the same platform, and they share about 75% of the same parts, Tesla will do exactly the same thing. They'll probably aim for a closer to 80% part share between the two cars. They'll use the same packs, the same battery packs, the same door panels, probably the same roof panels. They'll, they'll use as many things in both models as possible, but they'll just be a hatchback and a high riding sort of small crossover. However, I believe there'll be a total of six variants, meaning three variants of the hatchback and three variants of the crossover. The base model will be a single motor standard range vehicle That'll be the cheap model. That'll be the $25,000 model. It won't be $25,000 in some markets, but it will be in China. 
Then there will be a long range model. There'll be a single motor rear wheel drive. And then there'll be the, of course, the performance model, which will have a dual motor option. Then of course, there will be the performance model, which will be a dual motor variant. That'll be like their model three performance. So how big will be the battery packs in these different models? I predict there'll be three different battery pack sizes for these models. All the packs will be using the same battery technology and it only makes sense to do so. And all of them will be structural battery packs straight from CATL's factory, straight to Tesla. They'll use a 30 kilowatt hour pack, a 40 kilowatt hour pack, and probably a 50 kilowatt hour pack in the top version. So that's my guess there. That's purely a guess. But when you think about the weight of these vehicles, and the new energy efficiency and energy density of these battery packs, I think it'll actually give these vehicles a lot more range than you realize. In fact, I believe and I've heard that Tesla is targeting an ultra high energy efficiency of six miles per kilowatt hour. If they can do that, then even with a smallish 50 kilowatt hour M3P battery pack, you could still get 300 miles of range. That's the approximate number you would get in a vehicle that size with that kind of energy density. So what would be the weight then to achieve those numbers? Well, the weight of the standard range model, the Model 2 hatchback, I predict will be around 1,400 kilos, meaning 2,900 pounds. Then the Model 2 crossover, the standard range single motor variant with the smaller battery pack would be around about 1,600 kilos, or just, or approximately 3,300 pounds. Now at those weights, Tesla's still gonna get a lot of range out of these cars. That base model variant, the 30 kilowatt hour pack, that's gonna give you a range around 200 miles. The top model variant with the 50 kilowatt hour pack, long range variant, that'll give you closer to 280 to 290 miles of range. And then with fast charging speed, which I think these will have 250 kilowatt per, 250 kilowatt charging speed, that'll enable these EVs to actually charge very, very quickly with a smaller battery pack, you'll find that that'll be more than you'll need or more than the average person will need. So what's the price going to be? The price in China, base model, $25,000. Long range model will obviously cost more than that. We're looking at price from 25, starting at $25,000 for the cheapest model and then $35,000 for the performance model crossover. That's my prediction. I know it sounds very cheap, but I think that they can do it. What about in the United States? Price will start at 30,000 US dollars in the US and will top out at around 40,000 US dollars. What about the price in Europe? Well, European price will actually be cheaper than the US, even though they won't be making them there. That's what I believe anyway. I believe they'll make them for Europe at the factory in China and ship them straight to Europe. Now, there's really no reason for Tesla to make these in Germany. It's not like they have any advantage. It's going to be more expensive for Tesla to produce them in Germany than what it will be in China. So it doesn't really make a lot of sense, which is why they'll actually just ship them over from their factory in China, at least for the next few years. Anyhow, price though in Europe will be cheaper because one big reason. In Europe, we're going to see an influx of affordable electric cars from China. Many, many people are already saying they believe 20% of the car market within the next few years will be Chinese EVs in Europe. So Tesla will have to contend with that. Therefore, they'll lower the price a bit. 28,000 US dollars for the base model and around 38,000 US dollars for the top spec model. However, the key thing to remember here is there's only one way Tesla can price these vehicles at these costs and still make big margins, still make big profits. That's really important. That's Tesla's model. Big profits I mean we want to actually smash the competition. That's what they're doing now. To keep doing that, they need to make millions of these. Production numbers, 2023, they'll be in the thousands. They'll be pretty small numbers. However, I predict in 2024, Tesla will produce 1 million total. And in 2025, that number will increase to 2 million, while in 2026, that number will increase to 3 million. By the time we get to 2030, I believe Tesla will be producing around 5 million of these vehicles, the, the hatchback and the small crossover per year. In fact, I'm gonna go out here and be very aggressive. I am convinced, I'm 100% convinced, I'm committed to this principle. This vehicle, not the Model 3, not the Model Y, not any other car in the world, this vehicle, the hatch, and the small crossover will destroy ice powered vehicles, end the dominance of Toyota and end the ice age for good 
That will happen, my friends, by 2028. This vehicle will be mass produced. Millions of these per year will be being made and sold all over the world by that time. And frankly, vehicles like the Toyota Corolla will be ancient and go extinct. That will all happen before 2030. And thanks to the fact that Toyota has $221 billion in debt and will no longer have a top five selling vehicle period by 2028, that company is finished. They are in dire trouble because this disruption will happen incredibly quickly. It's not only Tesla disrupting them. Remember, there'll be other companies doing this. General Motors will do it in the US. Other companies will do it in China. Other companies will do it to them in Europe. They already are. They're finished, my friends. The Model 2, the hatchback and the crossover will just sort of sink in that final blow, that final hole through the chest. That's when it will happen before 2028. Now, I have one other prediction to make about this EV. Tesla will actually mass produce it. General Motors will never mass produce a $30,000 Chevy Equinox. The reason being, they won't make any profit on that car. Tesla has the ability to actually make a product for $30,000 that will be comparable to the Equinox and make a profit from it. General Motors do not. Now, you, if you think I'm wrong, tell me what technology General Motors have to compete with this. They don't currently make LFP batteries. And I know some of you are speculating that they will, but there's no plans for that to happen. So that's not happening at least within the next few years. If they don't make LFP batteries, they don't have structural battery packs and they don't have giga castings, how on earth do they expect to be able to make a $30,000 SUV and make a profit? They don't. They're reasonable people, even though they don't sound like they are all the time, they know that that's not possible. That's a marketing ploy. So I wouldn't be falling for that one. Now, let's end this on a high note. This will be the most affordable mass produced EV in history. And I'm talking mass globally produced. They'll be made and sold in hundreds of countries all around the world. But it will also have the highest efficiency rating of any electric car. And it will finally convince the skeptics, the haters, and all the naysayers, and make them admit that electric cars not only are better than gasoline powered cars, but actually they're also much more affordable. Now, let me know your thoughts. Did I get anything wrong on this? Do you have any predictions of your own? What are your thoughts on this? Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you, my friends, for watching. As always, have a great day, and I'll see you again on the next video. Bye-bye.